Were you the guy in church every Sunday saying, mm. saying the sinner's prayer over and over? I was that every guy for time. like two years. Man. Every time. <laughs> Lord, forgive me. And he goes, why don't you get your husband mm -hmm. and we'll talk. Mm -hmm. She goes, oh, sir, I'm not married. He goes, no, but I know about the five you've had. Mm. And I know about the guy you're currently sleeping with. Mm -hmm. You know why <laughs> Satan doesn't have to lie about me? Because yeah. I armed him with enough truth in yeah. my life. Yeah, he don't good. have to make up stories. That's good. I have three cardboard boxes that I keep flat mm -hmm. inside a cupboard in my office because mm -hmm. I know there's going to be a day someone from Faubourg. Bruce Lawn. Our American churches do a great job talking about forgiveness. You know, oh, forgiveness, forgiveness. We do a lousy job talking about freedom. Mm. Like I knew, and then I came to a point of knowing what I did, I was forgiven, mm -hmm. but I had so much guilt and shame about who I was, mm. what I've done, who I've done, mm -hmm. where I've been. Mm -hmm. And so even though I was forgiven, I walked with nothing but guilt and shame. Mm. Your past is true, so you can't outrun it. Yep. You can't hide it, it's yep. true. Yep. And it will become God's most incredible testimony and tool for you, mm -hmm. or it will become Satan's most powerful tool against you. Oof. And that is depending on whether or not you find freedom from yeah. it. Yeah. So I'm asking for forgiveness for things a hundred times. Yep. God, forgive me for that night. God, forgive me for yeah, that yeah. gal. Give me for that woman. God, forgive yeah, me yeah. for... And it's like, how many times do you have to ask for forgiveness? Yeah. Were you the guy in church every Sunday mm. saying, saying the sinner's prayers Raise over and over? I was every that guy time. for like two years, man. Every time. <laughs> Just, Lord, forgive me. I yeah. accept Jesus into my heart. This is like the hundredth yeah. time. And they're like, well, are you asking for forgiveness for you this week? <laughs> no, no, about two and a half years ago. Yeah. For the first I go, no, I've asked forgiveness about 300 times. Yeah. Well, either the cross <laughs> is broken or your understanding of forgiveness Come is broken. On. Yeah, Because the good. cross, like I'm taking my card, I'm swiping my card every week on the mm -hmm. cross for the same debt. Mm -hmm. And I had forgiveness. No one walked me through freedom. Mm -hmm. First John 1, 9 says, if we confess, God is faithful and just, and he will forgive and cleanse us oh, from that unrighteousness. Yeah. I had forgiveness. Nothing cleansed me from all that unrighteousness. Mm -hmm. So every time I start to worship, man, mm -hmm. you know, raise those hands, this little voice goes, really? Those hands? Remember mm -hmm. what you used to do with those? Oh, I'd put them down. Mm -hmm. Every time I'm like, Lord, I'm going to, this little, really? Mm -hmm. You? What if people in this church find out who you are? Mm -hmm. No no joke. So in that course, I become a youth pastor. I become the very thing I hate and I don't want to become. Mm -hmm. And then my next youth pastor job up in, uh, up in East LA County, Pomona area, I have three cardboard boxes that I keep flat mm -hmm. inside a cupboard in my office because mm -hmm. I know there's going to be a day someone from Fabric finds out I'm a youth pastor up in L.A., mm. and they drive up and they tell the church who I really am. Mm. And I'm going to unfold those boxes, get everything I can out of my office, and just take off. Mm. And I'm waiting for that day that the rug's pulled out when people wow. find out who I really am and what I've done. Wow. I had forgiveness. I didn't have freedom. Yeah. And I'm still with this, oh, man, if these kids really knew about mm -hmm. their youth pastor, mm -hmm. people still really know about Chris from 88 to 91 mm -hmm. or 92, mm -hmm. some of 93 and yeah, probably 2011, a little 2017. It's, it's just <laughs> sin nature. Yeah. And I didn't have freedom. Mm. So how did you find freedom? Because I think um, a lot of people relate to this. I think a lot of people relate to, I mean, I, I get so many DMs, whether it's about specific sins. I get some DMs about people, you know, do I need deliverance for this thing? Do I have a demon? Yeah. I get so many of these types of DMs. And yeah. so, because because the freedom, you're, which you're kind of getting at, is kind of like the sanctification part. Yep. Uh, Jerry Bridges put out a book called The Disciplines of Grace, and he broke it down. He said, justification is all God. Glorification is all God. The sanctification is us cooperating mm. with God. So mm. it's saved That's by sal grace, uh, salvation by grace through faith alone. Yeah, you've been given it. Yeah. Now you need to receive it. Now you got to cooperate yep. with the Lord to be refined to be yeah. the type of person he wants you to say, chisel away underneath that 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 slab of yeah you know what i mean just yep. nothingness and oh, then as good. it chisels away you have to cooperate with the holy spirit and yeah. so how do you how do you how does that happen for you how do you start cooperating I, and, and, and another and way sanctified? we're saying like the theology says i'm forgiven i'm sanctified i'm set apart i'm yeah. holy i'm considered a saint yep. not a sinner yep. i hate it when christians say i'm just a sinner saved by grace and mm -hmm. i'm like you don't know who you are yet then. that's right you're not a sinner you're yeah. a saint you're a child come on the theology was there. The head knowledge was there. Okay. How do you partner with that? I never applied it. Mm. I never applied it. Yeah. There's a big, big gap between knowing and doing. Yeah, or yeah. knowing and walking. And knowing and walking, yeah. And so you start looking at the woman at the well where Jesus meets this woman. Mm -hmm. And long story short, we all know what type of woman she is. I don't think, you know, she's considered the town, you know, whore or whatever and that. And that's painted the wrong picture. Women mm. didn't have that type of choice. Mm -hmm. She's a woman that's been used and abused over and over and over, and she's been discarded by husband after husband after husband after husband. Mm -hmm. And the guy she's currently sleeping with isn't her husband. Mm. But she also hates being alone. Mm -hmm. So whatever she is finding in someone's arms is better than arms being empty. Mm. And that's where the scripture has her meeting Jesus. Mm -hmm. 
And they talk religion, you know, oh, we have a temple. I know you guys have a temple. One day the Messiah will come. Mm -hmm. But for her to find freedom, he has to go there. Mm -hmm. And he goes, why don't you get your husband mm -hmm. and we'll talk. Mm -hmm. She goes, oh, sir, I'm not married. He goes, no, but I know about the five you've had. Mm -hmm. And I know about the guy you're currently sleeping with. Mm -hmm. It's like, why do you have to pull that out? Mm -hmm. And he goes, because she's going to have a great conversation with Jesus at the well. Mm -hmm. She's going to feel good about, oh, I met the Messiah. I got religion. Mm -hmm. And she's going to walk back and be faced with the truth about who she is. Mm -hmm. And that guilt and shame is going to wreck your best yeah. Jesus moment. Yeah. He does it with Peter. Last time he walks with Peter, Peter's the guy that denies him three times while Jesus is getting the snot beat out of him, mm -hmm. you know, in the fake trial. And Peter knows that. Peter will never give a message for the rest of his life without wondering, is somebody in the crowd knows what I did that night? Mm. Is somebody here that saw or heard my words? Mm -hmm. And so before Jesus leaves the earth, he has to clear it up with Peter. Do mm -hmm. you love me? Do you love me? I know what you did. I know what you did. I know what you did. Mm -hmm. I had forgiveness. I never applied it to my guilt and shame. Mm. And so what I walk through with people is, what is it that if everybody in the room found out about you, mm -hmm. you would leave the room and not come mm. back? That is what you don't have freedom over. Mm -hmm. What is it that if we put it on a screen right now, you would make sure you never showed your face in this group or in this church again? Mm -hmm. You don't have freedom if there's something there. Mm -hmm. You should be able to watch it and go, guys, I'm embarrassed, but man, that is why I have grace and mercy. Yeah. Let me tell you about a God that even saved that moment that night in my life. Mm -hmm. If you can't say that, you don't have freedom from it. So how do you do it? How do I meet Jesus at the well? How do I take a walk with him on the beach like Peter? I've got to bring my past and say, God, thank you. Mm -hmm. Not that I did it, not that it happened, not that I hurt people, but thank you that in spite of this, mm -hmm. I'm called your son. Yeah. In spite of this, you not only love me, you really, really like me. Mm -hmm. And this is what the cross was about. God, thank you. Mm -hmm. And so you got to take the skeletons out of your closet and open it and say, God, this I need freedom from. Not forgiveness. Mm -hmm. I'm never going to ask forgiveness for those things again. Mm -hmm. I'll ask forgiveness for what I've done this week, mm -hmm. but not those things. Mm -hmm. God, thank you that in spite of that, you love me. Yeah. This is how you see me. And this is what you want from me. Mm -hmm. Because I don't know how it works, Ruslan. I yeah. don't know. Is this is this the demon? Is this a spirit? Yeah. Is this my sin nature? Is yeah. this my flesh? Yeah. Is this the broken world? All I know is I have voices in my head that remind me this is who you are. Mm. And because it's true, I can't deny it. Right. right you right, know? Right. right. That's good. You go into church and it's like, Chris, remember the time you got those two prophets and you got that bag of coke? And I'm like, oh, I'm so embarrassed. I'm like, wait a second. I've never been with a prophet or done <laughs> and Satan's like, oh, I almost got you. And it's like, no, that's stupid. You know why Satan doesn't have to lie about me? Because yeah. I armed him with enough truth in my yeah. life. Yeah, he don't good. have to make up stories. That's good. And I have to take that same truth and now sit at the well or yeah. take the walk on the beach with Peter and say, God, thank you. Yeah. He wants to come and say, tell me about the five. Mm -hmm. Peter, tell me about the three. Mm -hmm. And I want you to know that I know and we're good. Mm -hmm. So if anyone ever comes out of the crowd, the irony now is me coming back and working here in North County, 15 minutes from Fallbrook, mm -hmm. yeah. where so much of my darkness in my life and my selfishness happened. And and being able to have people come up and go, especially my first five, six years here or so, are you the same Chris Brown? <laughs> and I'm like, oh, yeah. I go, hey, hey, before you leave, whatever stories you know, I'll multiply it by 10. Yeah. And let me tell you about the God I met that come has on. me doing this today. Yeah. But I'm not going to be afraid of the story. That's good. Hey, if you enjoyed this video and you want to see the full extended version of this podcast, be sure to sign up for our Patreon community for only $5 a month. It'll really help us continue contextualizing the gospel using YouTube, media, and podcasting. And in exchange, you will get full unedited versions of the podcast, of our daily after-party streams, a discount for our merch store, and exclusive access to our private Discord server. It's only $5 a month. The link for Patreon is in the description of this video as well as the pinned comment below. Again, hit the link in the description, sign up now, and I'll see you over there, all right? Peace.